So you've got a little guy and you decide you'd like to put some rivets on him. Uh, the easiest and best way to do this is using the insert multi mesh brush in ZBrush. You access this by pressing B for brush or clicking over here. If you press B and then I to filter it down to brushes starting with the letter I, you can also click here if you want. And then in this instance, we'll choose IMM parts because this has little rivets and stuff that we can use. So I'm just going to click on this once. This brush is now loaded and all of the available uh, sub brushes or elements that within this brush that we can actually, it was called insert multi mesh. These are the multiple meshes that you could insert. So by simply clicking and dragging, now I'm going to try this uh, on a part of the model and it's going to say this mesh is composed of multiple subdivision levels. You need to delete or freeze and try again. So what it's saying is that in the geometry tab over here, or geometry roll palette, or roll up rather, and um, that we have multiple subdivision levels. So there are two options here. We could either duplicate our model and then delete our subdivisions and work on that one. Or in this instance, I'm just going to simply delete the lower subdivision levels. Having done that, um, if I zoom in now, with a selected brush, whatever this, whatever this might be, if I click and drag on this now, I'm going to be inserting that brush as soon as I stop dragging. Um, you'll see that it auto masks the background and the next click that I make will do the same thing. And now even the previous brush strokes will be auto masked. So every time I do this, it's assuming that you probably want to go into edit mode and just position this or scale this or make it fit exactly how you want to. If you go back into draw mode, you can create the next one. You'll notice as well that if I'm in draw mode and I select a different brush up here, nothing really happens. But if I'm in move mode or scale or rotate mode, any of those three, gizmo mode basically, and um, then as I change here, the actual, and I can drag this across and whichever is the highlighted one will remain highlighted that area. And then that will basically change my brush to a different brush type. So in this instance, for example, I'd like this guy to have bolts that look like this, for example. Um, so while this works on this one mesh, this is the selected mesh. I'm pressing shift F here or uh, draw polyframe to show this is the mesh. While this is on this actual mesh, if I go back into draw mode and I click on another mesh, which is separate, it's still going to allow me to draw on any other surface because it thinks it's drawing on this, but it's looking at the underground underlying surface underneath and still attaching it to that surface. So basically, if you have any surface that doesn't have subdivision levels on it, you can use that as the start point for how you draw out your, your different objects. The last thing we need to go over is the scale or the size of it. So I'm just going to undo that using the history slider here. Go back to here where I've deleted the uh, lower subdivision levels. And when I, I'll press shift F to turn this off. When I click and drag now, the size of my brush, you see the, the red uh, icon, the draw size of my brush. If I click and drag, this can change to whatever size. If I keep on dragging, it's going to change the depth of that brush and you'll get quite a long version of the same thing. So ideally you'd like, it would be better not to do that very much. But if you click and then you hold down control, it will snap to the size of your brush and now you can just rotate it to the size, that's the rotation that you'd like. So the next time I click and hit control, click and hit control, you'll see it'll do the same thing, but now it's the exact same size as the brush. So if I were to make a smaller brush and click and hold control, click and hold control, click and hold control, I'll get a, a perfectly sized brush. The thing to be aware of is that we have dynamic draw size turned on here. So what dynamic draw size does is it basically says that your draw size is going to be the same regardless of how zoomed in or how far away you are from your object. If I were to turn this off, for example, and I have to, it'll tell you that you need to double click this to turn it off. So I'll, I'll double click the little text area to, to turn it off and I resize my brush. So my, resi my resize brush is maybe this size and I draw and I click. And if I zoom in, I haven't changed the brush at all, but I draw and I click and now I have two very different sized objects purely based on my distance, the brush size is going to be different. If I click and draw now, I'll get a large one. So to avoid this being an issue and to, to, to allow us to go around the model and place these at the size that we want to at any given time, we need to make sure that this dynamic is turned on for this brush. That means that we can choose a draw size that we like, something like this, hold and uh, click and control. And then I know that that will be the consistent draw size I'm holding click and control, 
click on control so anywhere on my model now that I want to add in these little rivets they will be of the same consistent size maybe they're too big there but yeah you get the idea <laughs> okay um, and obviously if you want bigger ones then just increase your brush size to the size that you want click and hold control click and hold control click and hold control and control drag to unmask at the very end hope this helps bye